Welcome to episode 53 of In Touch with iOS, a podcast that talks about iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, Apple TV, and related technologies, plus tips, apps, and gear. I am your host, Dave Ginsburg, and my guest this week, my returning guest, is Frederick Van Johnson from the TWIP podcast. How are you doing, Frederick? I'm doing great, David. How's it going? Good, good. Glad to have you back here. It's more stuff to talk about here. There's always something to talk about when it comes to uh, iOS and iPhone and photography and absolutely. News. And it just, uh, just it continues to uh, continues to evolve. I don't think it ever changes, does it? No, it'll <laughs> never stop. It'll never stop. So. This this week actually is a very slow week news wise. I was very surprised actually, but um, I guess that's. That's how it is sometimes. But uh, yeah. I got a couple of new stories here we're going to talk about. And then uh, I figure we, you know, spring break's coming up. And I thought this would be an excellent opportunity to, to talk to you about um, how uh, you take pictures with your iPhone and, and, and or your iPad. And I'd be interested to hear what you say about the iPad part of taking pictures. Yeah. So, and, uh, and uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just, just dig right into this here. So, um, the first story I, that caught my eye was, and I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at it at all, is you know it's Samsung and that foldable uh, phone. Did did you take a look at that at all? As far as the, I did, I did. I I checked oh, that out what, and I watched the release video and you know the whole nine yards. So it's what, uh, what was your thoughts? Yeah, looks looks pretty interesting. I you know I as with any new hardware technology thing you know you don't you can't really get a good feel for it yeah. literally until you get a feel for it right and you'll hold it in your hands and 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 then that's only half the equation the other half of the equation is actually using the thing for a couple months or weeks right. or whatever to see where the holes are because there's always going to be holes like oh you know it's great but battery life or it's yeah. great but you know the hinge fails or you know or it's it great. could be just great period and it's great you, but it's two thousand two hundred dollars <laughs> <it's, laughs> yeah yeah there's that well, i mean there's been that steady creep of of yeah. uh price increases for smartphones across the board right so yeah oh absolutely even yeah. samsung with the s10 plus i'm interested i know that some people have already been doing some comparisons with with the cameras uh between the 10 and uh 10s max and uh and the uh, 10 uh the s10 uh, plus and yep. uh yeah it uh yeah it's definitely going to be interesting uh that's to say at least here so but uh, this art this article actually pointed out that potentially that samsung is offering to supply these foldable displays to both apple and google mm -hmm. so Will that entice either one of them? Do you think? I don't think so. I mean, no. Samsung, you know, but who knows what I know? I'm not. I'm not yeah. behind closed doors at either one yeah, of those companies, right. obviously. So who knows what the what the uh, the data looks like? So or, or the you know the the economics or the spreadsheet, you know. Yeah. But looking at it from a customer standpoint, and also an ex Apple employee standpoint, you sure. know, it from it. Apple and Samsung have been locked horns for a while now in litigation. So there's there's that, you this know, and, you know, so there's that one that half of it. The other side of it is Apple likes to likes to invent their own stuff you know, yes. and do it, yes, and, do. you know, presumably do it better than everyone else and give you things that you didn't know you needed. Like Steve Jobs used to say, you know, he likes to invent things or Apple likes to invent right. things that we didn't know we needed. Right. So. You know, with those two things in mind, I, f I find it highly unlikely that a yeah. company like Apple would go buy uh, competitors or license a competitor's technology when they have more money than most governments on earth, right? They could, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they could yeah. easily just do it themselves if they wanted to, so... Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely going to be interesting. I mean, to me, I think this is a first generation uh, product release. Um, it's you know just like anything else when you buy a product for the first time, it's something new, mm -hmm. it's shiny. You know, I I'm an early adopter, but not that much of an early adopter. Especially right. my bank account won't allow me to be doing that either. So, yeah. um, I'd rather watch everybody from the sidelines to see how this go, how this plays out. But uh, it's going to be interesting. You know. Uh, yeah, I have a, I have an addiction that takes most of my money. It's called food. And food. Yeah, it turns out. We're going to talk about food and photography. I have to bring that up, bad, too. Man. Like, I, have, I have to hit the food thing every, like at least two or three times a day now. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple food topics we're going to be bringing up here later here, so yeah, cool. this, this should be good. Uh, so, yeah, it should be interesting to see where this where this actually leads um, as far as that goes. Um, 
other other discussion I want to kind of throw out there is because is the fact that um, the Mac Observer actually uh, had an article about uh, talking about an unannounced product feature, which is which actually I was very surprised to see happen a couple of days ago. Apple at their shareholder meeting and uh, if, uh, Craig Federici is kind of was being you know, the calling him uh, Hair Force One, of course. Uh, the uh, <laughs> uh, he he kind of uh, slipped out and saying that uh, yeah, there's going to be some other features that USB C is going to allow on an iPad. I'm like, really? Is that really true? Well, I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at that, but uh, I did. I did. I saw that. Yeah. I think that what the, the main thing that I saw of that was video, video out from the, from the USB C port. Right. Which, That's huge. yeah, which is, which is pretty huge, which, which will allow, you know, folks to presumably use their iPad pro instead of a MacBook pro yeah. for presentations and things like that. Uh, lightening our load and changing the, the, loadout structure right. for trips right <laughs> so you know if you only had if you, if you could get everything done on an ipad then it makes more sense just to bring the ipad instead of the macbook uh, oh, and all the power bricks and all that stuff um yeah i think it was strategic you know i apple apple has been known to not ever do anything without a reason Right. And you know, they don't make those kind of mistakes mm-hmm. where they're like, oh, oops, we told oh. you about some new feature. They don't we'll do back. that. Everything they do is 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 programmed and on a grid. <laughs> so yeah. you can you can I would I would imagine there's a war room in the new Apple campus, yeah. you know, where they know, hey, in October of 2023, <laughs> we're going to start teasing this thing, you know, that people More are going to want and all that. So I wouldn't put any stock into Air Force One making an unscheduled <laughs> landing. Or- <laughs> That's right. Uh, the uh, I mean, what's really enticed me so far is you, know, you can now it's a USB C device. You can use use a USB C dock uh, to plug some things in now, especially your SD cards, and you don't need to have all of Apple's accessories. I mean, I bought I don't know if you have it the the o- OWC travel dock that's USB C, and it's got all the ports on it and they work i mean and most of them do work i mean i have one that actually has an ethernet con- uh, jack on it i have that it, one too yeah, yeah it, it'll I, actually I use this Atechi, um there's several different adapters yeah. um in fact i'm using one right this second now um can i show it to you yeah i guess oh, i right. can show it to you well, i'm not really well, you and i can see anything, it but <laughs> uh, you can't see it or well yeah it's an audio podcast but you can see it uh it's this guy uh it's called a Satechi. yes yeah, that makes good stuff I, ha- I bought the port that goes on my mac macbook pro to go on yeah. the side and this the one I have has uh, has HDMI out on it, yep. um, mm-hmm. three USB three ports on it, Ethernet, There's Ethernet a yeah. USB C port on it, as well as a micro SD and a standard SD slot nice. on it. So well, pretty much everything that's missing from my MacBook Pro is is in this little device. So I'm the, I'm happy with it. What the uh, uh, if you have a link for that, we didn't push put that in the show notes so people could see that. You got uh, it. Send it and to and the um, what do you think? You know about the approximate cost of that one is? Is that about? Uh, um, uh, yeah, I have to look it up. Um, okay. I'll, I'll, you know, actually, I can look it up right now. So That's okay. We'll, we'll throw in the show. That's, I, I, think can I, th- I can multitask. I can multitask. <laughs> I threw you a curve here if we're talking about different topics there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, that's what's great about USB-C. And, and I don't know what your thoughts are, but do you think iPhone is going to go with a USB-C port in the next generation? Or do you think they're going to wait? Um, I, I sincerely hope so. Cause, be, because right now the, the, my iPhone, and I have iPhone 10, so the, yeah. my iPhone, which is a late model, very expensive iPhone, right, right. as you know, is the one of the few devices in the constellation of devices that I use that is still not USB-C. Right. Right? So, which, which you know, again, like back to that travel loadout, it changes my travel loadout because my... You know, my my phone and my watch, you know, have to have a specific have to have a specific bottle where everything else can have a different bottle. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Those are very picky babies. So, yeah, I would love for it to have it. But, you know, I I don't again, I don't have any inside information. No, of course. Not. My my guess is the unfortunately, I don't think the next iPhone is going to have USB-C. I think the one yeah. after it will likely have USB-C. I think this next one is too soon. I think yeah. it's still too soon, and they're probably still gathering data and probably doing all sorts of magical spell incantations inside Apple and learning f- from the, you know, the the iPads with US- USB-C before they push it out on the phone. So that okay. that's my 
my uh you know i'm trying to brace my enthusiasm <laughs> that's right <laughs> for USB-C. i would love to be pleasantly surprised and have them shock me and put USB-C on the next phone but i'm gonna go with no yeah i don't yeah. I don't i don't see it coming on the next phone because it's just too soon and apple's very pragmatic about their their changes especially to an entire ecosystem like the iphone like one it's one thing to do it on the ipad you know which arguably has a has a smaller footprint than mm -hmm. iphone it's a less it's still an important product to apple but it's a less important product iphone is world changing and to retool and change the port you're changing you're changing a lot of stuff i mean you're changing yeah. car mounts you're changing an entire ecosystem Ugh. of third-party accessories you're i mean it goes on and on and on and on it cables does. you know adapters everything just gets obviated and obsoleted at the moment that they change the port on the iPhone. So they've got to give that some careful consideration before yeah. they pull the trigger. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see where, where it goes. And, uh, and uh, uh, you know, you never know. Apple surprised us in the past here. So, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't know. We don't, we don't know what we don't know. <laughs> so. This is true. So uh, let's uh, let's jump right in. Let's uh, you know spring break's coming. I'm at, I'm actually going to be going on a little bit of vacation here in a couple of weeks. I'm going to Las Vegas with my my wonderful wife. So we're gonna have a little fun, and I wanna I wanna I wanna take advantage of taking a little more pictures of uh, different places uh, and and having that skill set to utilizing your um, utilizing your um, your iPhone is uh, is is key. You want it to be your, your one of your one of your uh, tools for your cameras when you travel i mean you travel with your dslr all the time or has there ever been a trip that you've that you've traveled with just your iphone or ipad as your as your yeah phone? in fact just i just got off one that okay. i traveled with just my iphone um uh, well th that's not technically true i mean the, it was the wppi wedding and portrait photographers mm -hmm. conference in las vegas so i just got back from there a couple days ago okay. and i did not bring and if here here's the irony of the 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 situation i was the mc in the panasonic booth because I'm, I'm a panasonic you yeah. know uh ambassador for lumix yep. <clears throat> excuse me and but yet i did not bring any bodies with me <laughs> or any lenses <laughs> because i knew i mean looking at the schedule i knew how busy i was going to be and there sure. was going to be absolutely no opportunity to take any real photos you know and i know how those kind of conferences go so what i did instead was i brought my of course, I brought my phone, the iPhone 10, and um, I brought the DJI Osmo Pocket with me. Ah, you want the Pocket? Okay. So yeah. I've got, I've got yes. the mobile too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. So I probably should bring it with a, me. <laughs> I have a very small little bag that I carry around with me that has everything I need in it to do a three-person mic'd video 4K interview. Okay. Two camera, if necessary, you know, using the iPhone and the Osmo Pocket. I can do, yes. you know, wide shot and punch in and all that stuff. So I can do all that from one little bag. And I wanted to just see if I could do all that, have mm -hmm. that level of capability while uh, traveling with just uh, a carry on, <laughs> you know, a yeah. laptop bag, a laptop bag and a small roller bag. And and I was able to do it. I had no no problems. Um but normally, normally, depending on the trip, I will. Sure. I don't. I don't. I'm not the photographer that has a, that feels an obligation to bring a camera with me every single place I go. You know, dinner, it's on my shoulder and all that stuff. Right, right. I used to, but those days are gone now because I think of smartphone technology. Um, now I, I feel like I can very easily get by and get through most situations with just my phone. And if it's a if it's a situation where I need superior optics and mm. the power of a mirrorless or micro four thirds or whatever camera, then I have those at the ready. I can grab them sure, and, sure. and take them with me, but I don't, they don't need to be with me all the time. Yeah. I mean, I have my DSLR sitting in my closet, the Nikon D 7,000. I've haven't probably touched it in quite a while because you know, I've got the 10 S max. I mean, that's a pretty, 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 pretty awesome camera on that iPhone. So yeah. something to, to think about. I mean, I've got a big trip coming up to, into Europe and going to Italy in, in, uh, in the summer. So, uh, that's going to probably be a DSLR trip. I think I should not, uh, not bring that with me. This will be my second time going there. So I've got a lot of photos from, uh, I went there nine years ago. So, but I'm going to get some different perspectives now and the different, uh, different types of photos. So, uh, yeah, yeah even, then, even, even on that trip, yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I would bring my, my larger camera too. Right. Uh, but I wouldn't bring it with me everywhere. Like if no, you're going, no. you're going out to dinner at night, no, no. I'm not gonna bring, bring your phone, you know. <laughs> I'm being a tourist. Yeah, I'm going to the wine, the, the wine country, or 
places where you know you want to get some good long zoom shots uh, uh it comes in handy but i mean this this i tell you this camera on the 10s max is pretty pre- pretty amazing as it's in itself so yeah um yep. so i threw i threw in some of the couple coming to just cut some of the quick tips and i'm sure obviously you know a lot of those um I think a lot of people with the sp- focus and exposure can always be a, a challenge with with folks when they're using their iPhone, um, and how to do that. And you know, uh, tapping your viewfinder where you go to the camera. Do you have a good skill or do anything? And I know whenever you're teaching, do you talk about that uh, specifically as far as uh, focus and exposure uh, with that? Yeah, thing? yeah, I can touch on that a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's like we were saying that the the technology and the AI in these devices is yeah. superior. It's very, very superior when it you know in comparison to older cameras, not in comparison to seasoned photographers. But, right, right, right. But you know, in comparison to older point and shoots and even older phones. The, these these cameras kind of know what the subject is and they do a really good job versus in the old days it was the to get you know a proper exposure was basically your camera looking at a scene and trying to get it to what it thought was balanced to 18 percent gray mm-hmm. like if it could get it you know most of the values in the scene to around 18 percent gray that equaled a good exposure sure. these days it uh, it still does that to some degree but it also applies a bit of logic to that because it knows hey that thing in the foreground looks like a subject and it's kind of close to me and it's got two eyes and nose and a mouth i'm going to Make the assumption that that is what this person wants to take a photo of. I'm going to base my exposure on that thing, right? Or there's no carbon-based life forms in this shot, but there's a lot of blue at the top and a lot of yeah. brown at the bottom. And, you know, so this is probably a beach scene. So I'm going to oversaturate a little bit. So it can make those kinds of decisions. Um, but occasionally it does the wrong thing. So with fo- focus right. and exposure, like you said, you can tap on the screen and it will focus and expose for that location. But uh, many people don't know that you can tap and hold tap on and hold, the screen. Right. Mm-hmm. And it brings say. up an up and down slider where you can increase or decrease the exposure uh, from what the computer in the camera, or the AI thinks that the exposure should be. So yeah, I do that from time to time, but very rarely. If it's a challenging yeah. lighting situation, like I'm in sure. a dark room and there's a candle lighting someone and it, the, the, the AI gets confused and I'll give it an assist, you know, and say, no, this is what I really wanted. Yeah. And, and, that's what's so awesome about these about the iPhone. I mean, it, it, there's no rhyme or reason of having you, you just point and shoot, and that's what most people do. I mm-hmm. mean, compared compared to the days when we had the point and shoot cameras, which has pretty much become a a dead dead device. I mean, there's so few of them out in the market now. Uh, the, why why have it when you have a smartphone like this? And it that's what's so awesome. Like you said, it's a computer in your in your in your hand. It, it's gonna do all the exposure stuff for you, right? Yeah, it's your Pixel Droid, and yeah. it yeah, and, and it's very it's very smart, and it uh, you know let like in Star Wars, let the targeting computer do the work for you, you know, and unless you really really want to use the Force. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing is avoiding shake. That that can that that other feature that's on the iPhone is uh, you know, tapping that on screen shutter button can also uh, cause camera shake. Now, uh, to avoid this, then you do you take your pictures. I mean, I'm I'm so used to using the the, the button at the on the on the screen, but little, little people very don't realize you do. You also can use the volume control uh, on the phone to take the picture to avoid that shake, right? Yeah, it takes it takes a it takes some skill uh, in terms of being able to hold your camera right. It also depends on how large your hands are, you know. <laughs> I got uh, that. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're trying to do get yourself in the shot, you know, and use the physical button on the camera. But yeah, that that is a thing. Uh, I I actually prefer. I actually I don't know if it's what the percentage is, but I flip 50, 50, 50 between using the on screen shutter button mm-hmm. and the physical shutter button okay. uh, because sometimes I I want to pretend like it's a camera. Right. You know, and I'm I'm using the phone in, in in landscape or horizontal mode, and you know I've got my finger on the shutter button, and I'm tapping to focus, I'm to get my composition, and I click, and I got the shot. So it really feels like a point and shoot camera. Right. And other right. times I want to see the shot, and for some reason it's more intuitive to actually just tap the screen and and get the shot that way. But mm-hmm. the good news is we have the ability to do both, right? Which which is which is a you know a question for mirrorless camera manufacturers is why can't i do that on my mirrorless camera as well yeah, some of them exactly. do allow you to do that like on the panasonics and i think some of the sony's and mm-hmm. and fuji cameras you can set them so that you can tap and focus and take the shot at the same time from the lcd 
on the back of the camera, but yep. many of them don't let you do that yet. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's and it, that, that's that's one of those things. Just just be aware of it because there's sometimes I have seen some photos that people have taken with their iPhones. Like, gosh, that could have been a lot less blurry if you would have held maybe taken the picture with the with the volume control as your shutter button instead. Or even better yet, if you put it on a tripod and and you're using the you know some people have Bluetooth or remote. Uh, that you could do. Um, I might use it with my with uh, Osmo uh, Mobile Two. You can do their you do the, the shutter right from there. So yeah, uh, yep. but uh, but most of us have the phone in our hands. You know, be aware to, as far as that goes. Um, the settings, the settings in themselves. You know, there there is a place to preserve those settings. Do you do you make changes in any settings, or do you like to say you keep them to, to the to just the core settings? That, I keep that are, them. I keep them at default. You know, yeah. um, I you know it's funny. The it's my my I think the the smartphone and my my let's call it my proper camera occupy two different spaces in my head when it comes to photography. Mm-hmm. With a smartphone, I know it's smarter than my my quote real camera, so mm-hmm. I tend to let it make more decisions for me, and I tend to rely more on the defaults that are that are in the camera. Mm-hmm. The now the the my Micro Four Thirds camera is very smart, so I tend to depending on what i'm shooting like it's it's heresy in the photography world to use any sort of intelligent automatic mode or program mode or anything like that right. but i don't believe that i think that's gobbledygook you know i believe that the you you have a device that you can use for different situations and if i'm in a fast moving situation i don't want to take the time to figure out or or take the chance of getting right. the exposure wrong or whatever i i want to put my trust in the computer i'll put it on intelligent auto or auto uh, uh, or program if i want to and, and but other times i want to drive in uh you know the, using the manual transmission so right so i'll put it in manual and i'll have full control over everything in the scene i think it's important for photographers to to understand the breadth of the capabilities that their device has so that oh, they can absolutely. make, you can make proper decisions on when to go full auto and when to just, you know, take over completely and go manual because you want to break rules or whatever. Right. We'll get to that in a second, but long exposures, mm-hmm. um, but the preserve settings, if you want to go into doing that, you can, if you go into the settings under camera, you can go into the preserve, preserve settings, uh, set settings. And if you'd rather set it to specifics, like um, I think most people like to use the photo mode, but you could, you know, if you, you take a lot of portraits, you maybe you want it in portrait mode as a default or maybe a square mode for, for, for those of you really taking a lot of pictures of panoramas. I don't know if you'd be a default to panorama, yes. but um, have, have you, have you, I've had real good success with panoramas. Do you, do you like the feature of the panorama? Uh, I do. I do. I, I do too. I do. I love it. I, I think it's great. I've seen it improve over the years, right? Yeah. I remember when it was first introduced and we were like, wow, that's great, except for that thing right there. Um, but it's getting better and better every every release they do. And, and let me just throw one thing in there on preserve please. settings real quick. Please, so please. The, the, for me, at least my mindset is I never know what situation I'm going to be in when, I'm, when I need to take a photo. I don't know if I'm taking a photo of my parking spot at the mall or remember it mm-hmm. or if I'm trying to do some sort of artistic shot or a macro close-up shot or a portrait or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I choose to leave the camera at default. So it, it's, I'm, not perver- I'm not you know saying, okay, automatically go back to the portrait mode because I do a lot of portraits. I'm saying just stay default and I go back and I make the decision when I'm going to take the photo like I'll be like you know you're going to be over in Europe you know you'll probably take a lot of panoramas but I would if it were me I wouldn't necessarily lock my camera into defaulting to panorama mode I would just (laughs) because it's a click it's a swipe and a click away you know it's like boom there I am and now I'm doing a panorama next time I activate the camera it's reset and ready for me to make the choice back back to zero I think that that works better for my type of brain yeah I mean I think just like you said at the beginning, just just leave the preserve settings alone. I mean, the, the, their defaults are fine, and mm-hmm. you can go back and change them when you need to. I mean, yeah. really, that that's really all it is. So, um, long exposures. Have you have you? I am. I know you've dabbled into a lot of long exposure photography with uh, with the iPhone. Uh, what what is your thoughts on that? As far as uh, how how well it works with uh, the iPhone versus you know. It, and such. it works. It works well. I mean, it works really well. In fact, my friend um, Photo Joseph, uh, mm-hmm. who who has a YouTube channel at youtube.com slash photo Joseph, um, he does a lot of iPhone photography as well. And he, mm-hmm. um, you know, I remember one day when he was 
you know, you know how we are as, as nerds and geeks, you know, yeah. we like find something and then got to tell everybody about it. <laughs> he found, he found out how good the long exposures were in iPhone, That's you amazing. know, we're both photographers. He's a Lumix ambassador as well. Nice. And, um, he was just raving about how good they were. And it, it's interesting when you look at those, you got to look at it from the standpoint of, and maybe I'm aging myself, but you got to look at it from the standpoint of what we had to go through in oh the film God. days. Bulb. <laughs> <laughs> to do a B long mode. exposure, right? I mean, it's just, it, it's depressing because we spent so much of our lives trying to get it right and never being successful. <laughs> right. You know, oh, and now so many today, times. <laughs> yeah, now today you can whip out this little piece of glass and aluminum out of your back pocket and do something that rivals anything you could have done back then. So, yeah, I, I dig it. It's it's really yeah. cool. But, you know, on top of that, one of the and you're probably going to touch on this. One of the important things is, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and one of the things I carry with me all the time, even in my little bag, is a something to stabilize my camera. Yeah. You know, whether it's a little it's typically a little tripod. In fact, yeah. I have this little Franken pod that I call it that is kind of a a mixture of a selfie stick, uh, <laughs> a little mini micro tripod and an iPhone holder then, and a GoPro mount with a specific go. carrier for the DJI Osmo Pocket on there. <laughs> And with that thing, I can get all kinds of shots with it, whether I need to extend it or just put it, you know, stabilize the camera to get in the shot or or do long exposures or any of that stuff. You know, uh, so that's a if I was to give any tip for an iPhone photographer looking to increase his or her game, it would be get some sort of stabilization for that camera. It will change the level of your of your shots immediately. Absolutely. And then, uh, you know, when you go into the live photo of the photo itself, um, you, you, uh, you could, you could do some after effects too, right, with the, with long exposure. So, yeah. I mean, that's the beautiful thing about the, not only the camera part of it, the editing part. I mean, it just, I think about it. We just, you just, you, you make me reminiscent here. We talked about the old, the old ways. And I remember bulb and taking, oh, uh, I, I, I mean, my old Micromad EL uh, SLR camera. I was taking film shots of, of, a, of an eclipse sitting outside my, outside my front of my house. And I'm just sitting out there. I'm doing long exposures on a tripod and, and, uh, to, to think about then with film compared to now, what we can do with these devices, just it's just absolutely amazing. It yeah, really and at the same time, yeah, it's and it's it's. I think it's it's interesting because it's important to remember. You know what they say: you got to know where you came from in order to know where you're going, right? So, I, I think it's important to remember the the way photography was, but at the same time, you know, where we have all these new tools, I think it's important not to obsess over the past, you know, and say, right. oh, oh, absolutely. It used to be like this and I used to have to do all this stuff. You know, just I'm gonna do film now. <laughs> right. Embrace the you know, it's kinda like someone driving a Tesla around and lamenting or <laughs> You know, <laughs> talking about, wow, when I had my horse and buggy used to take me four days to go get a, you know, a gallon of milk. And now I can do it without even looking at the road, you know, yeah. just go get the milk. <laughs> you know? yeah, exactly. And now you can make stops along the way and do all kinds of crazy stuff. Just embrace that part of it versus, you know, always talking about how cool things are. So I think it's important to remember that stuff, but look forward and look at all oh, the cool sorry. stuff we can do now. You know, oh, it's just oh, amazing. Just that's why I stay on top of the technology. Got to keep the new the new phone because I just I love taking pictures and taking with with the iPhone and I just it's it's always something the devices you're always going to have with you and it's, it's at my it's at my uh, my hip and I see you put up Focus so that's that's going to be a good uh, I I did yeah. talk about that app um, that, yeah that, that should be your app you talk about too as I I talked about yeah. it a while ago but we got to talk about it again here sure. um, all right uh, then the level indicator. Um, when you go into the settings into the camera, you, you it does help you compose shots. And then using that rule of thirds, you know, that being the, uh, you want to explain that real quick about what the rule of thirds are as far as the, that grid goes. Sure. Yeah. So the rule of thirds, which we like to just say is a suggestion of thirds. Right. <laughs> so the the rule of thirds is when you take you know you you dissect your your basically your viewfinder with two lines horizontally and two lines vertically. Right. And where those lines intersect are what they say is where the points of interest, where you want to place your subject so that it generates the most interest versus, say, putting your, your the, the subject dead center in the middle of the frame, which is kind of what our default is because humans tend to like symmetry. So we want to put everything in the middle of the frame and take the photo. Um, the rule of thirds gives you 
four areas um, on in the screen where you know where those those lines intersect where you should put your you know theoretically put your subject in order to right. make it a more interesting photograph. And it really all it really is, is grids. I mean, just you know, you look at the picture and then there you are. That's all you're doing is you're turning it on and and showing grids uh, and and just that's the that's the rule of the each third of that box. And yeah, it makes yeah. it a lot easier really uh, to compose um, if you if you have trouble with your eyes looking at <laughs> what you're taking a picture of. A lot of time, most people shouldn't need those grids, but but yeah. it's there. It's there. Yeah, the, the, I the, keep the, mine on all the time. I lo- I love the grids. Just just I don't know why. I just like to have mine yeah, there. They just you're help used to it too. Feel. I mean, yeah, they help me feel more more in control of what's happening in the scene. Um, one tip I can I can I throw up a oh, throw out a quick please. tip? Absolutely. One quick tip I, I throw out to people um, in some of the the talks that I do, beginning photography talks, is some some instant ways, even with iPhone photography, um, to make your photography instantly better. Uh, is to think of the shots that you're doing from the perspective of the subject. And what I mean by that is if you're taking photos of kids, you know, most people in the world kind of fall between the five foot and six foot five range, you know, yeah. or seven. so which means we all perceive the world at a similar from a from a similar perspective. The minute you step outside of that perspective, mm-hmm. instantly your photos are more interesting. So if you get yeah, down sure. low you know, outside of that, most people, especially if you're really tall, you don't want gravity is not your friend. So if you get down, down. (laughs) yeah, you get down low, you get that shot. Now your shot is more interesting. If you get up high and get a shot and now it's more interesting. And then the perspective part of that is if you're taking a shot of a subject like a pet or a um, a small child or something Mm -hmm. like that, take the photo from their perspective, get down with them so that you're on a peer to peer sort of level with them. And, and get that shot. And that tends to make the shots, you know, just that much more interesting. Absolutely. No, that, that's an absolutely great tip. Uh, to, to, it's just simple stuff. Just like that. It's just simple. Get, yeah. It's simple. not rocket science. It's not rocket science. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's little small things that you can do instantly, like right now. You I mean, if you have yeah. an iPhone with you right now, you should just test it yeah. and, and take a photo of, take a photo of someone at eye level you know, which is right. which is kind of a, a a a duplication of how you would perceive that shot or the the world from that perspective, and then go high. You know, put the camera up above your head and use that volume button trick and yep. snap the photo. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't see the viewfinder because it's above your head, but you can use that volume button, can't you? You and sure you can, can. You can take the photo from a high Easy. perspective. Yep, and now people are going to be like, "Well, how'd you do that? That's mm-hmm. amazing." And you're like, "Well, you know, I listen, I listen to, I'm, I, I listen <laughs> to, to Frederick on the Twip. That's how that's how I learned, it. Or, on, or even on on, on in, t- in touch with iOS here too." Um, yeah. the, uh, the other feature I, I kind of pulled out here, and I just added this because uh, Apple just put together a, a, a neat commercial video, which I don't know if you saw it yet or not. Is is the one where the fo- the couple that's in bed and uh, the the He's looking at a picture of his wife, and there's a guy in the background, and he's like, who is that? Oh, that was an old boyfriend. He, oh, he's just a friend. And then all of a sudden, he's blurring out the background using what's called depth control. Uh, <laughs> I haven't great, seen that yeah, yet. I, I have a link in the show notes. Everyone, everybody see that. It's a hilarious. And, and, and I just wanted to, if you could tell the people, the listeners a little bit about what the depth control is and what, how great of a feature it is. Um, yeah, the, the it iPhone. is. It, depth control on the iPhone is is part of a, a sort of a new. T- I don't know if it's new, but it's a, it's a, a new, new technology to smartphones called computational photography, and that's right. when you know you're allowing the computers and the artificial intelligence within the camera to capture all sorts of data, then act on that data uh, for your image to to the benefit of the data. So in the in the case of depth control, yep. It means, you know, with with traditional cameras like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, the the holy grail, especially in the portraiture realm, is to have a blurry background yeah. so that your subject pops out of that background. But in order to get that, you have to purchase lenses that have a wide aperture or a low yeah. F number. Right. right. And the the what goes along with that is a high price tag. Right? <laughs> Very so much so. The lower the oh, F those number, wide angle lenses, the higher the price tag. Right. <laughs> so, um, which puts it out of reach for a lot of people, you it know, does. and, and yeah. point and shoot cameras and video cameras tend to have wide and small F numbers, which means everything's in focus, which leads to amateurish, you know, generally yeah. speaking, looking shots. 
shots. Sure. But if you have a high F number, which means a wider aperture, you can even test this right now. If people are listening to this. You can your eyes are essentially cameras, right? So right. you can put your hand in front of your face right now, open you know, or squint down which means you're closing your aperture. If you squint down, you could probably make out your hand and the stuff behind your hand. Yep. But if you open your eyes really, really wide and look at your hand, now the background goes out of focus and your hand becomes a portrait, right? So yep. that's what that's what depth of field is. And the right. depth control on the iPhone is amazing because what it does is it analyzes the scene because there's multiple cameras in there, two cameras, right. and analyze the scene. One of them is getting depth information, and the yeah. other one is getting image data. And it, you know, through some sophisticated AI and software in there, it gives you the control to drag a slider or a, a dial inside mm -hmm. when you're editing the photo yep. to, after the fact, blur out that background. Whereas, which is you know, with sorcery to us older film-based photographers. Yeah. Where, you know, we were we were getting the f-stops all the way down to get yeah. the, the best up the field. Exactly. <laughs> Once you take the photo back in the old days, you, either you got it or you don't. Now yeah. that equation is broken. You take the photo, and because you have all that data available to you and the computer knows what to do with it, yeah. you can blur the background out selectively or, or you know, right. you can control how much of it is in focus and how much isn't. And that's what that depth control does. It's it's yeah. really amazing. I, I used to watch the video. <laughs> it on the iPhone. It was it was great, but it had some issues. Yeah. Like it would cut off ears and yeah. things like that. But on the iPhone 10, it's been amazing. You know, not only for Turn just up, yep. but even stuff. You know, like we're sitting at a bar in Vegas, and you take a photo of your drink sitting on the bar with the lit up bar in the background. Mm -hmm. Now you can blur that lit up bar and make put the focus you know the the attention directly on the glass so yeah it's it's really cool yeah check out that video it, uh, it just cracked me up because the, the, uh, the, the old right boyfriend now. is blurred out now <laughs> it was very easy to do and that's how they showed it so um it, well it reminds me of uh, go ahead no go ahead that reminds me of an episode of you have you ever seen that the series black mirror i have not oh tell, tell us though i'll have okay. to go check that out yeah, I've just taken Black. a whole, I've taken a week out of your life. Okay. Black, Black Mirror. <laughs> Black Mirror is a is sort of an, a science fiction anthology that is done sort of in the vein of um I want to say like Twilight Zone but for 2019. Okay. Uh, so they have these these, you know, episodic sort of releases but they they play with really interesting topics and i won't give it away but each one of them is different i, I think there's half a dozen episodes out now but one of the episodes deals with censorship mm. and technology and sort of the way like with social media you can forget people and block them they you know in their future their version of the future we all have these sort of augmented reality lenses in our eyes that are not removal mm -hmm. right so you can see data on things and you know that that sort of thing but you can also edit people out of your life <laughs> so you oh right my app pick is gonna is gonna talk about editing people out of things here so, yeah. so soon here yeah. so so, <laughs> yeah, so if someone like in the in the episode I'm talking about, someone took a restraining order out on someone. If you do that, they automatically become blurred to you and it blurs it blurs them and garbles their audio. So whenever you look at them, all you see is pixels and garbled audio is what you hear. <laughs> oh, my God. That's funny. <laughs> that's amazing. It's amazing. Well, you have to it if you haven't seen the, the just Google Black Mirror. You'll, Black you'll Mirror. I'm, putting, I'm gonna put it actually in the show notes here. Yeah. <laughs> Check that yeah. out. Yeah. Um, and, and of course, whenever you're on spring break, you're always going to be shopping. And you're also going to be looking at things. And then you know everybody everybody uh, uses QR codes. And mm -hmm. one of the neatest features that they added in iOS 11, I think it started it was iOS 11, I believe it was iOS 12. Uh, I believe iOS 11 that you can take a picture or point at a QR code with the camera and it automatically knows that it's a QR code and it brings you to whatever that QR code is telling you to bring you to. to, to. And you're seeing QR codes everywhere. I mean, you, yeah. you, go, you go to a sign and you want to find out about something. Oh, let me put it up. Oh, cool. That's why that's if there's the information. I mean, that's yeah. what's great about these things and with, with having that and the scanning. Scanning is a, is a really amazing uh, thing that, that the iPhone can do as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to touch on that a little bit with photos uh, here in a little bit here. So uh, it, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you've used both those features many times. I have. I have. <laughs> uh, the scanning I've used a lot. Uh, yeah. it, it literally takes the place of, you know, the space 
sucking scanners and I have a scanner <laughs> slide scanner remember the slide scanners I had I, yeah, had, the, yeah, I had the old Polaroid one where you stuck the slide I had slides I have still have slides on my co- my closet behind me and all stuff I should go look at all my old photos and start I gotta start digitizing a lot of that stuff yeah, uh, yeah those are it, gone now it automatically it, it'll automatically detect borders and do a, a, a yeah. per- perspective correction on the scan image so yeah I've used that the QR code thing you know like I said I just came back from this WPPI yeah, I'm uh, sure there was tons of those yeah, people were walking around with business cards mm-hmm. that, and and some people. I remember this one guy had a QR code on his shirt, and you know, <laughs> perfect. You, you, you know, <laughs> and he's instead of printing up cards hey, and killing just get trees, my QR code. he's like, yeah, here's my QR code. This is my URL. Take a picture of it or aim your camera at it, and you yeah. do it. And iPhone and other, and frankly, other other phones will see it and interpret it as a QR code and take you to that mm-hmm. URL. It's amazing. You know, it's the future. Yeah, it really is. So, um, and then the iPad. Yeah. What do you think? What's your thoughts of people taking pictures with their iPads? I mean, we used, it's, to, we used to clown on people that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. I want to, you being it's, a photo- professional photographer, you are, I like to know what you. What well, you really the, think about? Yeah, there's well, but there's there's a <laughs> couple schools like of thought, this all right? Day. You see me right. Doing this right now. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of schools of thought. The first school of thought is you just look ridiculous, right? Because you, you have this giant thing up. Why not just use your phone? It's the same camera that's in your phone, dude. So yeah. why not? Or or even worse than the camera that's in your phone. Just use your phone. Um, the second thing is it blocks the people behind you. <laughs> getting the shot. I'm at a concert. Let's bring up my iPad. <laughs> Let's bring up this giant glowing rectangle to take your attention away from everything. Um, but the, on the other side, you know, the yeah. glasses have full side of it. It's the it's the you know, it's if you're it's all about photography. Right. So that's the biggest, most beautiful viewfinder you will ever find. Oh, my God. That's on thing. Earth. Right. And, and if you're if you have issues with your vision or, you know, you just want to see the whole thing so that you can get the shot correctly. Who cares? You know, who cares what the people behind you think? You know, yeah. <laughs> this is your shot. Just throw it on a tripod. <laughs> yeah. Throw it on a tripod. So, I mean, yeah. So are- I would never do it. You know, I think I've taken. The only time I've even used the camera on my iPad, I think, has been the front-facing camera for video conferencing or Skype or, you know, something right. like that. I don't think I've ever taken a photo with the photo, yeah. with the camera on the iPad because I have a phone that, that can do a better right. job. And But, you know, it's there. Well, I don't want them to take it away, Apple. So you know, I'd rather our, have it there than not. Our mutual friend Chuck Joyner uh, from Mac Voices, he uses an iPad all the time for when he does all of his interviews. Uh, he, yeah. got, he just did it at CES, and he anytime he's you know, when he's at Mac Stock and and other events, uh, he he has an actual grip that holds the iPad Mini he has, and uh, he's using an iPad for his uh, his gear as, as video. So it is it is fully, a fully capable device. Yeah, it is. It is fully capable. You know, I would. If I could do if I could do um, an episode or episodes of this week in photo, we're video for the most, and we do right. video and audio. Um, right. If I could do an episode of this week in photo where I could at least plug a camera into the USB C port um, or multiple things in the USB C port, like a microphone camera, um, I would use the iPad all day long and leave yeah. the MacBook behind. Um, I love. We were, I was talking to someone about this the other day. The iPad user interface, once you get used to it, and if you haven't, if you're one of those people that has an iPad, but you really haven't really mastered, you know, the the multi func or the the multitasking features of it, and I think it, it, it's worth your effort and worth your time to just sit down yeah. and understand how the device works, you know, from dragging the dock up and clicking and holding on apps in the dock and bringing them yeah. out to, to, to activate multitasking because it becomes a – I would argue a different device once you start using it like that. And right. once yeah. for me, once I started using it as it is designed to be used and not trying to force it into some Mac OS paradigm and mm-hmm. instead accepting it for what it is and using it, it, it honestly, Dave, it feels like like when I'm using my iPad, it mm-hmm. feels effortless and like I'm in the future. Yeah, it feels I agree. like it feels like this is the way things are going. And then when I go back to my Mac you know, it, I still love the Mac OS, obviously, you know, above, sure. especially above other operating systems. But, you know, when I'm using the Mac, it, it feels as modern as it is. It feels outdated. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Because in my head, much like we talked about, we started this conversation. We were talking about the ports, you know, the lightning right. port and the and the uh, the USB-C. 
-hmm. It feels like that. It feels like my phone and my tablet and my Apple TV are all on iOS and they all work similarly. My watch, you know, they all work similarly Mm -hmm. except for my Mac. <laughs> you yeah, know? Exactly. So I have to switch gears into thinking how this Mac, yeah, the Mac is much more powerful in some ways, obviously, uh, but it just feels like the Mac is is behind and it's it's a it's a cousin to the regular ecosystem of devices that I right. use now. Absolutely, for sure. So uh, yeah, th- th- I, th- I don't feel like you're a dork by using an iPad. And like I, I won't admit, I won't, I won't admit, I don't do it that very often. Most of the time, I have it in a case anyway. I have my, you know, in fact, I when I brought it up on our camera here is, uh, I had my keyboard case on here, so I had a, you know, it's got to take it out of the case to really yeah. to get the full functionality of it. So, uh, but don't be, don't be afraid if you want to take it. Like I, like you said, the viewfinder is giant. It's just a, I like, I like looking at a nice big picture like that. And you're gonna, you're gonna get the full, <laughs> full effect of the photo. But you pay uh, for it. Why not? Don't yeah, let but, anybody tell you. You know how, how to use your tech. Use it stick, however you want to use it. Stick with the stick with the iPhone. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, you you hit on uh, taking pictures of of old photos. Uh, you know, scanning. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's such a that, that was. I mean, gosh, I remember getting my old scanner sitting up on my desk and let's scan all those photos in. It took hours and hours. Well, of course, this is too, but you don't have to do that anymore. You have. I mean, there's so many apps out there now that do it. Um, I found this new app, and I don't, I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at it. It's called uh, Photo Mine. No, I haven't. I see it in your notes here. Yeah, I have Photo M Y N E. It's uh, it's relatively new, and I, I thought I would just talk about it a little bit because it does a quick. It's a very quick and easy way to scan photos in like a matter of minutes, tens of photos, and it puts in auto cropping. It uh, it adds uh, it auto detects uh, picture boundaries, and 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 you, you you touched upon that a little bit. For a lot of there are other apps that you use that that do that already, right? The the auto bound auto bordering and all that. Yeah, the the boundaries. Well, the 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 notes app. You know, when you're right. when you're using as a scanner, will auto detect boundaries and and perspective correct and and do some color correction as well. So if you tell it that you're taking a black and white photo, it will, or you're doing a black and white scan, it will understand what you're trying to do and use the the technology in the app. You know, to for leveling and all that stuff and. And yeah. automatically apply that to the final image so that you don't have to bring it into some other app and straighten it. And yeah, crop exactly. It. it just does it automatically for you, which no other scanner that you can purchase at Best Buy will do for you. No, <laughs> so, it won't. So it won't. to my knowledge, you can't. So uh, this, unfortunately, is not – It's it's a, they, they're calling it a photo scanner by Photomine. Uh, it's a photo scanner and collage maker. Um, the only thing is – and it's getting a lot of good reviews, um, it, but it – they say it's free. It's not. It's not really free. You only get like it's about free 10. with watermarks all over uh, your images. Uh, or oh no, you can scan like uh, I think you t- up to ten photos, but they give you a f- free trial. They want you to sign up for their service. So mm-hmm. the service costs go all anywhere from uh, I think it was like a. Uh, Ten dollars all the way up to you can buy a yearly plan like around thirty five dollars, but they'll give you tens of thousands of photos to be able to, to work with their with their service. Again, there are other services out there, but um, I, I think this for having a, a tool like this that could scan photos fast, easy, and in right you know very quickly. And I'm not, I'm I'm getting no no perks from this this app at all, other than I just I just recognized and saw it. I thought it was really cool. Um, you should check it out. Uh, but is there any other, like other than Notes app? I mean, is that pretty much what you do as far as any scanning of photos, or do you have some other apps that you use? If you off the top no, of that's, head? that's that's generally what I use is the is the Notes app. Uh, one thing I would touch on with this this guy um, with yeah. the, the Photo Mine app is I'm going to try it out. And it looks it yeah. looks great, but for me it looks like it would feel the it would fill the the space of. Mm-hmm. You know, during the holidays when you're visiting relatives and you have that right. urge to uh, liberate photos, family <laughs> photos, to migrate them to your home. Pull out that album. Let's get those pictures that have been <laughs> exactly. sitting in those albums for the last 25 years. <laughs> exactly. And my relatives are always like, don't take any photo. <laughs> <laughs> leave the photos stay here, you know, because they always you take them if you want houses. them. <laughs> but that's that's camera. what this app is for. So yeah. yeah, you could say, oh yeah, these five photos. Let me grab those real quick, throw them on the table, snap it. Now you got them all, and you can leave them in place for larger groups. And and this is me saying this without having tried uh, Photo Scanner by Photo Mine. Right. Um, yeah. But I would say, you know, for if you have like. You know, shoe boxes and shoe boxes full of old photos and negatives and slides and all that stuff. Then you're probably better off sending them off to a service that will scan them for you and and put them online in a protected cloud. 
you know, account that you can okay. then download. And I've done that before. And that works. That works really well. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I'll, I'll, I had two other photo apps. So I mean, we can just bring we can just switch gears here. And don't worry, you don't have to have your apps. If you think of something, you can. But I threw some, and I thought we, we could discuss. Um, you said you mentioned food. <laughs> I have mm-hmm. a food app I picked here. I just signed up for this service. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's called Freshly. It's a uh, it's a service that actually pre makes the food for you, and um, and they uh, they ship it to you. And you, all you have to do is put it in the microwave for like three and a half minutes, and it. It's they're healthy meals and they're really good. I, I'm very really? like impressed by some of the of the food that they offer, and it only comes out to about eight or nine dollars a meal, and wow. you get like nine meals. And I, I, we we've ordered between myself and my wife, and you know being on the go, it's hard to, to eat right and when eat and cooking. I mean, I I tried the other services like Blue Apron and and, and Hello Fresh and all those, which of course you have to cook, but these foods are very fresh. I, I'm 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 in, thoroughly impressed with some of the um some of the meals I've had. Uh, if you go to the website, I put a link there in the show notes. Um, it that first meal there, that's the steak peppercorn. I, I can I already know it because I saw it because I had it. It was so good. And it was good. It was. Yeah, and that's, for, I mean, it's hard to do steak correctly, right? Yeah, so yeah, the so steak they, was done correctly. It was done correctly, and it tasted really good. The potatoes and the vegetables, and there was there's chicken dishes. If you and, and obviously you can't see the app yet, but uh, when you, when you go into the app, the app is absolutely gorgeous. They did a really great job of of, of designing it. You could tap in and look at and look at. The, the different meals it gives you all the descriptions of what in, what ingredients are featured in the meal and what the calories are how much carbs and how much fat and protein and it really it really i'm i'm very impressed to the way uh they that these fo- these guys did it i believe they're they're really expanding rapidly i don't know since you're on the west coast i don't know yet yet if they're if they're offering the service in the west coast because they're shipping it i believe from maryland out in the east coast so it might be tough although they are putting in ice and it ships you know quickly so they probably should ship it overnight to um to, to the west coast folks too but uh something to check out um they, they have like a premium again i'm i'm, I'm not getting any uh, compensation for this I'm, I'm just recommending it because i think it was a great thing and then you talked about food i figure what the heck uh do you like taking pictures of food are you are you a guy like that you, or does it drive you or is it it's not something you like to do yeah, yeah you know i'm embarrassed to say that i do yeah, i me do too. <laughs> i'm bad <laughs> I don't care. I, if it's if it's something that's that's that I want to remember, or you know, if it's of a restaurant that I want to remember and go back there and pull that up, you know, yeah, what course. I had there. Of course, why not? Yeah, I love taking pictures of food, and I love editing the photos as well. So, you know, I'll take pictures of food and then, um, you know, bring them into Snapseed and add a little saturation yeah. and <laughs> you know, right. a little structure in there and make it look better than it did when I before I consumed yeah. it. And have shared the image with friends and family before I finish eating it. So <laughs> I yeah, don't mind so it off. Food is fun. Um, the other app I threw out there, and actually The Verge just talked about this app a couple days ago. It's called Spectra Camera. Um, it's, a, it's a new iOS camera app that allows you to use AI to create stunning long exposures. And the one thing like we talked about earlier is you're, you are able to, like, if you like it, say you have a picture of a road or a car or there are cars in the road, you want to remove them. It has uh, full out AI capabilities um, on here. I threw a link in the show notes for that. Um, I don't know if you've had any experience with this. It's only two bucks too, which is actually I think it's three, but it's three three dollars now. It went up since this article came out. But no, I'm um, buying that tonight though for yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> I figured I knew I was going to dice it this one. Oh, uh, you're spending they're, my money. I knew coming <laughs> on this show, I'm spending money. <laughs> I think th- they're the th- they also are the same the same uh, developer that uh, developed um, the the, the Halid camera, mm-hmm. H A H A I L D E camera. I put that in there in the show notes oh, too. Oh, Haline, Haline, Haline. I know I knew I was going to pronounce that wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, uh, that's a old old. They, they, that's from uh, the silver Halide. Those yes. are the little the little bits of silver yes. that used to be in black and white film. Uh, fixer that still are in black and white film. That film and fix. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I I was not bad fixer developer. I yeah, you stuff. know. <laughs> I remember that stuff. I, I put, trying to roll those rolls of film on the, on the spindle. I'd always touch the film and I would always yeah. screw it up. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was that was. See, my you world bring me man. back memories of my photography days. So the old <laughs> the old the old film days. So, yeah. uh, but. Uh, uh, again, Frederick, I can't believe it. We had uh, the time has just gone past us again. But I wanted to give you an opportunity to tell everybody about you and uh, what the stuff you're doing at uh, at this week in photo. You do some great stuff. You have some amazing uh, courses. Have you updated the courses? Are you are you doing still doing courses or? Yeah, keep, we are doing courses, courses, and we're in the process of updating everything. Um, and there's a couple of cool things coming. Um, so just to, to zoom out a little bit to use photography terms. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, the uh, the overall sort of TWIP ecosystem is our school, um, our podcast slash website, as well as our community. Yeah. So those Great are the, the three edge. So the the three blades of our sort. Um, the community is at twippro.com, all one word, twippro.com. And that's a private paid community. It's four ninety seven, four ninety nine per month to join that. Okay. And because it has that small fee on there, the, the membership is really high quality. Okay. So there's a, it's, uh, the, the analogy I like to use is it's a, you know, if you go into the airport, the airport, like an international airport is sort of like Facebook. Right. Everyone's in there. They're all going to different places. They all have different agendas and, you know, whatever. But then within that airport, there's the airport lounge, you oh. know, that that some people are that have access to. And when you go into one of those airport lounges, it's a different world. It's quiet. It's relaxed. There's snacks available. You can kick your shoes off. You can watch TV, you know, while you wait for your flight. So it's kind of like that. So the Twip Pro is uh, the Twip Pro community is sort of like the airport lounge for the okay. photography world where people can come hang out. So there's that. Um, the podcast, thisweekinphoto.com, yep. is our main site. It's one of the longest running photography related podcasts. Great stuff. Um, I w- in, in, in the Milky Way right now. We haven't looked beyond, but you know, <laughs> it's one of the longest ones in the Milky Way. I feel confident making that claim. Um, but we talk about we're we're a weekly show and we talk about all things photography, you know, as the name would suggest what happened that week in photography. Yeah. So we talk about that stuff. Um, one other thing about the community is we do a weekly photo critique session from hmm. from submissions by the members into the community. So we have a photo critique area where you can submit images to be critiqued. Yeah. And every week, every Monday, in fact, a couple of hours ago, we did one for this week. We uh, run through and critique all the images that have oh, been fun. submitted for that week and record it. It's video. So we recorded me and a co-host and, and sort of give comments and feedback on the images that were submitted. So that's that's the community. And plus, you yeah. know, lots of chatter and people helping people and sharing fines and discounts and all that kind of stuff is going on yeah. in there at any given time. Well, you're spending um, my money now. I have to join here. That's, that's you got to join. Yeah, please Five, join. Four ninety seven a month. That's not that's not bad at all. Yeah, but I've yeah, been looking at your iPhone photography course. I want to take a look at that. And you and I and you also did a podcasting course. I was gonna I was gonna uh, take a look at that. Uh, yeah, pocket at, shooters. Pocket shooters pocket shooter is relaunching stuff, yeah. again soon. Yeah, good, so, good. so yeah, this, you you reminded me. I have so much stuff going on. It's crazy. All right. Um, all right. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. So uh, all the links to you are on the show notes. One last thing I want to mention, I want to, I've been, I talked about this with you before the show is uh, Max Doc. Max Doc 2019 is coming up. We talked about it uh, last week when I was on with Allison Sheridan, but I want to mention it to it, mention it again. Uh, Max Doc is a conference and expo that in in suburban Chicago. It's up in Woodstock, Illinois, and actually Crystal Lake. Um, it's happening again this year. It's uh, July 27th, 28th, uh, and. Uh, we have a, such a blast, and this year's uh, this year's theme is create. Um, and uh, you got to think about the word create and what what the speakers are going to talk about. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I came up with a pretty good uh, pretty good topic, and this will be my, my fifth year as well. I've been part of this conference for the, all five years now, um, and uh, I, I can't wait. And that's what I'm trying to entice you to come out to see us and uh, and check it out. Uh, I'd love but, to come out there, man. <laughs> yeah, you, sh- you should come out. I mean, and again, it's like coming home for you because it's Chicago, so it's mm-hmm. in the Chicago area. So. So some great uh, there'll be some great talks. Um, if you don't know, uh, uh, David Sparks and Stephen Hackett will be there. They're going to be recording uh, Mac Power Users number five hundred, the five hundredth episode live, and uh, they actually just were in Chicago uh, this past week since we record this uh, for the American Bar Association. They came in for a meetup, and I missed unfortunately. Uh, but uh, I've put a link in the show notes. It's macstock 2019com If you register today, they have an earlier bird uh, uh, special. It's only one hundred and seventy nine dollars. I mean, you think about that for all the conferences you go to and all the other people. To go to that that is like a bargain i mean you're getting yeah. two that's days right. of sessions that's nothing 179 dollars early bird pricing uh again i said the, the 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 mac power users will be recording live you'll be able to watch that uh, as it goes on uh, we've had the, the my mac game uh, show quiz which we've done a number of years ago that's with uh, guy Cyril from the my mac.com podcast and mm-hmm. uh uh, we've had uh, and they give you T-shirts. The, the the food, the food is amazing. It's just they they give uh, uh, lunches both days. I mean, the food is well, really good, great catered uh, food. Uh, they have uh, a Barry Folks uh, Mid Mest uh, Mac Mingle is an evening event. So we have a lot of fun. When last year we did uh, we did board games. And then some people were playing board games, some some kind of obscure board games, and some and we got into the bar and they were doing some karaoke. So we had a lot of fun and and that was and that's 
you know, the, the biggest thing is, as I talk about this, is, is everybody has that opportunity to network. So, yeah. uh, and and uh, Mike Potter, who's the uh, who's the uh, organizer of this event for all all five years here, has just done a great job of, of really coordinating this. And we're just trying to get people to come out and take a look at it and have some fun. And I'm more than likely going to be speaking. I don't know officially as of yet, but uh, uh, we'll have some great speakers coming on. So uh, we'd fantastic. love to have you out there. So I uh, wasn't trying to get sell it to you, but I wanted to sell it to our listeners too because I can you know, I want to keep talking about it. And we're uh, we're definitely want you to. Well, I mean, it's, it's certainly a selling point that it's in my hometown, right? So. Yeah, so we'd love to have you out, and yeah, for you as well. So, um, but uh, yeah. check it out. The link's out on uh, on uh, MacStock 2019com It's 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 at McHenry County College, which is actually in Crystal Lake, Illinois, but it's right near Woodstock. But you know, Woodstock, MacStock. That's where we got the theme there. You know, Mac, yeah. Woodstock's not, Woodstock's not too far away. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and check it out. So. Oh, with that, I guess we've had our hours has just gone gone past us here. So, uh, Frederick, so uh, let me uh, go ahead and wrap this up and uh, get get us going here. So, uh, that is a wrap for this week. Uh, please send your comments and your your questions, suggestions to our email address at feedback at intouchwithios dot com. You can follow us on Twitter at in touch with iOS. You can subscribe in your favorite podcatcher, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, and TuneIn Radio. Or better yet, just go to our website, intouchwithios.com, where all the links to listen to us are all there. I am Dave Ginsburg, and you can find me on Twitter at DaveG65. Frederick Van Johnson, thanks again for uh, joining me again here. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks for the opportunity. It's been a pleasure. Yes, and thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.